right. All right. Tell me who you are and where you're from. Welcome. So happy you're joining us. Monica, I see Monica's on. Cricket. Tell us where you're from and what's going on in your neck of the woods. What's the weather like today on this Friday? I see Jill's here. Hi from New Jersey. Welcome. Mexico City. Ah, oh, bienvenidos. Florida, Texas, Columbia. Wow, we've got people from all over. Phoenix, Southern California, Houston. Hi, more Californians. Illinois, Texas, Arizona, Chicago. Awesome. So glad you guys are here. Eugene, Oregon. Welcome. North Carolina. Oh, I bet it's gorgeous in Phoenix. Nice. Seattle, New York. Oh, how fun. Welcome. Oh, Northern California Bay Area. Fun. We're going to take a trip up to um, the Northwest Coast this summer with our family, New York. Hello, San Antonio. So glad you could be here. Fun. Isn't this the best way to spend a Friday to, to talk about crafting and things you love and, and making and Katie from Tennessee. Welcome. So happy that you're here. So quick um, introduction. Uh, my name is Allie Dossel and I am coming at you from Utah in the USA. Oh, we've got North Carolina. Hello. Um, so we live just north of Salt Lake City and we're kind of right up against the, the mountains there, gorgeous Rocky Mountains. Um, and I have been married for over 20 years to my wonderful husband. And we have five kids, um, four of whom are adults. And then we have our like a little 11 year old, I like to call her a caboose. So DC in the house. All right. Hey, DC. Okay. So um, I am Allie Dazzle, like I said, and I work for We Are Memory Keepers. They are one of the leading brands in the craft industry. And we are so excited to partner with Michaels to bring you this amazing collection um, called the Shotbox Collection. And what the benefit is of this product and these accessories is that you can take professional quality images at home or anywhere because it's portable. Um, so it will completely elevate the look of your home business, of your um, content that you create. Um, you can use it for documenting or for archiving if you like to do family history or scrapbooking. Um, so it is just going to completely change how you um, photograph and, and do video as well, you can use it for videos. So if you're a content creator, maybe you're an influencer or a blogger, um, or if you're a small business owner and you're, you're a maker and you're, you're selling your crafts online, this is going to change the game, completely change the game. It is so exciting. Um, and what I love is that it is portable. Again, as I said, so you can use it here at home. It stores compactly but you can bring it with you on the go as well if you need to do location shooting or you know whatever if you're doing it at work versus home. Um, so lots of options and I can't wait to show you everything that this thing can do. I'm gonna do a ton of demos and we're gonna do different types of shots. We're going to use different accessories. Um, I'm gonna show you different types of um, crafts or, or items that you might be photographing and give you some tips on um, how to get the best look and the best lighting and all of that fun stuff. So, which is what I love. So we are memory keepers. I do their social media marketing. Um, I do, uh, like I represent them at trade shows, on TV, um, at events, um, and sort of the face of the brand. So um, I have a lot of experience in, in um, marketing and social media and um, making stuff look pretty online. So, <laughs> so this is gonna be really fun. I'm really excited. I have a lot of fun things to share with you. Okay, so let's dive in and talk about the different um, products, the different accessories and things that are available in the collection at Michael's. Um, so obviously the, the main feature is the shop box itself. Um, and that kit, if you just get that, that comes with two infinity backgrounds, which are the kind that go from top to bottom. They, they fill the whole background. Um, and those are black and white. It comes with glare shields. It comes with a power cord um, and it comes with a bag. This is the bag that it comes with. So you can store all the things. And this has all the pockets for your accessories as well, um, for your power cords, um, you know, anything that else that you purchase and it fits box. So that's a nice, pretty good heavyweight bag. Um, so let me show you 
uh, all the accessories that you can get. So you can get a larger, uh, sorry, not a larger, it's about the same size, but it's um, a neoprene. So it's water resistant. So if you are transporting that shot box, um, you know, and you're worried about the weather and that stuff, this is a great bag to have. It's got a nice um, shoulder pad. It's really soft. I'll show you that in just a second. Um, there are two more infinity backdrops that you can get. There's a nice soft gray. And then there's the, the green and that can also work as a green screen. I'm gonna show you um, an example of that in a second. Um, and then there's uh, what I think is kind of a must have, that's gonna fall over. Okay, there we go, is the um, side shot. So this is just an attachment that goes on that allows you to do hands-free shots um, with, a, and, and you can use a tablet, you can use a, a smartphone, you can use a, like a traditional DSLR or a point and shoot camera, whatever you've got um, can work with this. And then uh, we've got two packs of backgrounds. And um, these are, uh, they're larger than 12 by 12. I think they're 13 and a half by 13 and a half. And they are covered with a matte laminate. So they're very sturdy. You can wipe them off with a damp rag and they clean up easily. Um, but we've got solid colors, all beautiful colors. Anything here can match your brand, the look that you're going for. And then we've got some photo real ones with lots of trendy textures and backgrounds to add some interest to your photos as well. So lots of options available. So I am now going to, um, Oh, that's right. First, I was going to show you a couple of um, these are some blown up images and I will actually have um, our host Felicia show you some from Michael show you some on screen as well. But these are just some I hope you can see that hopefully that's not too blurry. But so that's before and after. So this is especially with flat lays. There are a lot of issues with flat lays. You have to get that lighting just right. But there's a before and after. So you can kind of see that. Here's the green screen I was talking about. So um, if you're digitally savvy. Um, you can use that green um, backdrop uh, as a green screen and then add in a digital background, which is kind of cool. I can't teach you how to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we have uh, designers at, at work that do that. So, but here's a handmade card. You know, if you'd like to make stationary handmade cards, sorry, this is backwards, but there's some paper quilling. Look at how beautiful that image is. I mean, it's all about the images. You guys, I can't stress enough when you are marketing online, it is all about the look. The image will sell every time. If you can get a good image, I'd rather have a really beautiful image of kind of something mediocre than a really beautiful item that is shot kind of mediocre because the good photo is always gonna do better every single time. Okay, so food crafting, you know, handmade items, whatever you're selling, you can make it look so much more beautiful with the shop box. All right, so. Let me pull these off and then we're going to dive right in and take some pictures. Um, and but first I'm going to show you. Oops, sorry, I lost an AirPod. Stick that back in. I had a another virtual event earlier this morning and I think my ears have had it. <laughs> so let me see. Can you hear me? Can someone pipe up and, and let me know if you can still hear me okay? Yes. Okay. You. Thank you. Great. Just want to make sure that didn't turn off the, the um, audio. Okay, great. So here's the neoprene storage bag. Um, and I'm just going to show you like, here's your two power cords, one for the side shot, one for the box itself. Here's where the side shot and the glare shield store. Let me pull out those glare shields and we'll talk about those in a minute. And um, I'll pull out the side shot because we're going to use that later on. Um, in the back here, this is where all of my background store. So we've got a whole stack of them here. We're gonna be using those. And then I'm gonna get out one of our um, infinity backdrops and we'll talk about those in a minute. And then let's get out the shot box and we'll set it up and I'll show you how easy it is because this is so easy. And I apologize if my back has turned to you for a good amount of this class, but that's just kind of the way it's gonna work. It's hard for me to do all this behind the table backwards and facing you. So I apologize in advance for my back facing you. Um, but here we go. So that just pulled out. There's handles on it. Let me set that down. All right. And I'm just going to show you how easy it is to set this up. Are you ready? Don't blink because it's easy and fast. Bam. <laughs> so let's do that one more time just so you can get that if you missed it. Okay. Here we go. Ready? Bam. 
Easy, right? Okay, and then if you want, there are some stabilizers on each side that you can pull up and snap into place. And there you go. Okay, so let's get that power cord. We need actually both of those power cords. So I will pull them both out. Okay, and I'm gonna plug this in. So what's nice, let's see if we can go to the overhead camera for just a second here. So I can show you, okay, let me skip this back so you can see that better. Okay, oops, I'm working with this backwards and upside down. There, okay, that's good enough. You can basically see, let me back it up just a smidge. Okay, so here they've indicated which, which port is for what, you know, cause you, I mean, you're reaching over here, right? So there's the main power port. So you don't have to like turn this around. You can just use the arrows there to plug in. So there is a USB port here. If you want to charge any of your devices in the process while you're, you know, while you're shooting, there's a USB port back there. And this is where your side shot plugs in. So I'm going to, um, if you can excuse me for one second, I'm just going to plug this into my um, wall outlet and get this powered up. All right, so let's, I'm gonna turn this on and it's an adjustable light. So it dials up and down so you can get different strengths. So hopefully you can kind of see that. All right, and then there's holes on the top for flat lays. So um, we're gonna talk about flat lays for just a minute and the challenge that you face with flat lays. Um, and we talked about those for just a minute because when you're shooting a flat lay, which means that your, your items that you're photographing are laying flat on a surface and you are taking a photograph from overhead. So I'm gonna slide in um, one of these backgrounds. This is a really pretty kind of ombre blue and turquoise background. Um, and we're going to photograph my planner. So right now planners, journaling, bullet listing, all that fun stuff is really trendy, really popular. So I'm gonna show you what a flat lay would look like if I was going to shoot this and, and post it online to try to sell some stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna place this in. Um, and so I don't know if you can see, that might be kind of hard to see. Let's maybe go back to the front shot for just a minute so I can kind of talk about my method, what I'm put, putting in and why I'm putting it in there. So <clears throat> when I'm putting this in, I'm putting my planner in slightly at an angle and you're, you're gonna see the shot in just a minute. Um, because that gives the photo a little bit of motion. You don't always have to do that. Um, that's not a, a hard and fast rule, but if you want to add a little bit of interest, angles are nice. They add a little bit of motion and, and interest. So, and then I'm going to stage this photograph. Now, when I talk about staging, I'm talking about setting a context um, or setting an atmosphere. You're setting, <clears throat> excuse me, setting up a look. <clears throat> I might have to get some water, I have allergies, <clears throat> sorry. That time of year, it's beautiful outside, but it's um, that season. Okay, so you're giving the photo context. You're telling a story. So if you're a food crafter and you have these beautifully decorated cookies, you're gonna maybe add in a couple of the tools that you used or ingredients that you used or some sprinkles or some, you know, maybe a, 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 a cutting board, you know, something, a, a dish towel, pretty dish towel, something to kind of give it a little context um, so that the viewer, when they look at that one shot, they can take in everything in that one shot. They can say, oh, that's a great tool. And that's kind of how you use it. So they don't look at that shot and go, what is that? And what, what, what is this about? So just think of your images as you're telling a story. So you have to set some kind of context. So the context I'm gonna set is I am, I am busy planning my week. And I'm, these are the fun accessories, stickers and, and die cuts. And you know, here's a little planner clip that I like to use. And here's my pretty gold pen that I use. And the reason why I'm using a pretty gold pen is because I wanna elevate the look of that shot. I want to help my viewers think, Ooh, pretty, you know, that's, <clears throat> that's high end, right? <laughs> this sounds terrible, but you are, you, you got to think about your customer about, you know, you want them to look at that and think, I'm going to have a really nice, beautiful planned life if I use that planner, right? So this is the marketer in me coming, coming out that you really want to think about who you're targeting this photo to and, and kind of give them context and give them that story. So I'm going to just kind of place these around 
Now, also when you're, when you're putting in, when you're staging, think about where you're placing things. Um, so one thing that you can think about is we like to call it the golden triangle. There's like the golden rule of thirds, right? In, in composition. Um, but there's also the golden triangle. So if you create kind of a triangle around the item that you want the eye to focus on, um, whether you're using color, so maybe you have items like there's a pink item here, pink item here, and a pink item here in the shot. So you've created a visual triangle. Um, so I have done that with my accessories. I've laid them so that they sort of create a triangle around my planner, which is where I want the eye to go. And that's gonna direct the eye right to that item that I'm advertising, right? Okay. so. I'm ready to take a shot. So I'm going to turn on my lights. And I, what I want to do is show you um, because these particular items have some gold foiling on them. And some of them are kind of um, glossy. So I want to show you a little bit about glare and, and tell you how to handle glare because that's a question we get a lot. So if we could go back to the overhead, please. And I'm going to go ahead and take this shot. And then I'm going to have Felicia pop it up. Um, and you're going to see that there is some glare. On, on this image. And I'm going to talk to you about how to address that. So let me put this up here and I'm going to use the middle. Um, so you can see I'm using the middle. And I need to scoot that a little bit. And you got to keep in mind where your camera is and center that camera. So you're not just centering your phone, you're centering the camera. Um, and I always recommend when you take a shot, don't crop it on your phone because that you'll lose pixels, you'll lose um, resolution that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a shot. And then I want Felicia to pop up um, the first image 1A, Shotbox class 1A. And so you can see, I always go square because that's the most common, unless there's a reason not to, like if the item is particularly tall or you know wide or whatever. Um, so there's a square image. Now you can see the glare, right? You can see that there's some uh, gold items and some some shiny items and that's you know it's probably not ideal and my pens kind of got some glare so let me show you how to deal with that <clears throat> and then I'll take another shot and you can see what happens so if we could go back to the front camera please I'm just going to show you these <clears throat> these are the glare shields that it comes with they're magnetic so they have little magnets on here and there are magnets up on each side inside, and you're gonna just slide these in and pop them up there and they're gonna magnetize. All right, and this is gonna help diffuse the lighting just a little bit, sorry. I need to do this this way so I can see better. Hold on, let me turn the lights off because the light's so bright. I can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay, I was trying to go too far back. <laughs> all right, so let's turn this up all the way again. And I'm going to take a shot, and you're going to see the difference that it's not quite nearly as, um, has nearly as much glare. So let's throw up one B. Thank you, Felicia. Felicia's the best. All right. So you can see that cut down on some of the glare on the main object, right? So the planner that I'm trying to focus the eye on has a lot less glare in this shot. Um, there is a little bit of glare on some of the other items, but not very much. Now, when you're dealing with, um, with gold foiling or metallic things, it's kind of hard to, to not have glare. And honestly, it's actually a little bit as good because that lets your viewer know, hey, there's some fancy gold foiling on this item. So it's pretty cool, right? It's, it's, a, it's a cool item. So, so that's, you know, that's just a good thing to have a little bit there. So, but you can see that. Now, here's the, the cool thing. I'm gonna, if we can go back to the overhead for a second, I'm going to turn down the lighting just a little bit. So we're not gonna be at full strength. Um, so let's go down, let's go in the overhead for a second so they can actually see. Oh, you can see, there we go. So I'm gonna bring that lighting down just a little bit and I'm gonna take another shot. Okay, if you can throw up one C please. So you can see the difference when you lower that lighting just a little bit, because there's a lot of white on that planner. Um, and so what, one C. Give me just a second. No problem. 
So I'll just talk about like why you might want to, to turn that um, the strength down on the lighting. Like for example, my planner is white. It's mostly white. And so that is going to, you know, create a, a brighter image. If you have an item that's colored, um, you can, um, you know, probably turn that light up a little bit more. So one C has just see how that's just a little bit softer, not quite as much of the white is kind of shouting out at you. It just, um, the, the shadows are a little bit softer. So, um, you know, it's, it's personal preference, but that just shows you some options. Now, if you could throw up one D, I'm not gonna take time to restage this, um, but I just wanna show you the difference um, when you take out the staging items that are in that photo that kind of create that triangle. When you take those out, that kind of changes things. You totally could just take a picture of that planner page with nothing else in the shot, right? Um, but you're gonna see in this next image um, what's gonna happen when you do that. So, you know, you can decide, like uh, honestly staging an item sometimes, again, can make or break the image for that, for that buyer, for that customer, that potential customer. So um, they can, you know, see the difference in, you know, their eyes going to be drawn to that. It's going to look elevated. It's going to look beautiful, or it's just going to kind of look plain, like a, a, a regular planner. So um, think about uh, what kind of items you want to add in. And also think about the fact that you don't want to overpower whatever item you're selling. See, now there it is with nothing in the shot, just the planner. Say, that's a nice image. It's not bad. It's well lit. It's, you know, it's got a little motion there. It's angled, but the ones with the, the staging with the, you know, props in there really kind of set a, a story, right? Let's go on to the next one to one E. And you'll see, I added a different background on um, this kind this time. So this is kind of like a, um, what's a stucco texture sort of, and it's pink. There's a lot of, you know, a, a little bit of pink on my planner. So it kind of pulls the pink out, um, you know, and I used a different um, uh, card down at the bottom there and because it was a pink background, I added a little blue to kind of contrast, but that again, that creates a little bit of interest and a little more, you know, story and context. So, all right, let me take some questions. Um, let's go back. I, I don't know, I can't, let's see from this view, let's see if I can, Look at the chat. Da -da -da. Does the pink background come? Yes, the pink background comes, well, it doesn't come with it. Sorry, no. It comes in the one of the um, packs. It's the photo reel pack of backgrounds. So, hey, Alex, there yeah. was one um, from Siobhan that's wondering if there's going to be a larger box at some point. Because you're here. And because you're hanging out with me on Friday, I'm going to like let you in on a little secret. Yes, a larger one is coming. So just, you know, you didn't hear it from me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any other um, questions about what we've talked about so far? I no? don't see any. I just see okay. a lot of people, have a lot of great interests and some have already put it in their carts. Sweet. I'm so glad because I seriously, this has completely changed how I take photos. All right. So we're going to now move on to archiving okay i'm going to show you how um just how awesome this is for um archiving family history you know old photos um awards you know items that you want to hang on to and document and and keep um but maybe you don't want to take the room to store them so i'm going to show you an example of that so let me put my um we're going to change out the background now I'm taking a photo of a piece of art that my daughter created, I don't know, maybe three or four years ago. I had my 11 year old, so this was when she was younger. Um, and it's a painting. Now, years ago, I have five kids. So years ago, I decided um, I can't keep all of these, but I don't want my kids to feel like their creations, their work isn't important to me. So we have this system where I keep, you know, I let them pick like half a dozen things and we put it in a file folder. Each of them have a file folder um, from each year of school. So we're not keeping everything, but the things that we don't keep, what we do is we photograph them and we, we keep those photographs, right? So that we have that. So we don't have to keep this actual piece of art but we have a document of it, a, a memory, a photo of it, right? And you can do that with, um, you know, other things, a con concert um, program, like, you know, tickets, um, awards, 
you know, like I said, old photos, maybe a, a letter from your grandmother and your grandmother's handwriting that you want to have, you know, you want to keep a, because, you know, some of those old photos and old documents, they're eventually going to corrupt and, you know, turn yellow and discolor and, and fall apart. So digitizing those is a great way to keep, keep those documents and preserve them. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do this. Now, what I'm, I'd like to do is I like to put in a background that's going to create a little contrast. So sometimes I photograph and then I crop the item. So it's just the item that's in the photograph. There's nothing behind it. Sometimes I like to leave a little border. Um, and so you'll see how that works. So I'm going to pop this in. And for archiving, I'm going to kind of center that. Um, and for archiving, what I like to do is I like to use my DSLR because, and here's why. I can get a higher resolution photo with this. Some, some smartphones and tablets, you have the capability to get a really high res photo, but I want to get like for my, my old photos of my grandparents and things like that, I want to get a really high res version of that so that I, you know, sometimes we send them out and have people um, edit them and like perfect them, you know, so the discoloration is gone so that the, if there's any tears or folds or, you know, ink showing through from the back, they can disappear all that. So you want to get the highest quality image when you're archiving so that you can work with it, right? So I'm going to go ahead and, and this is a, um, a Nikon, which one did I grab? Sorry, a D7500. Um, and I'm just going to place this right up here in the center. And that's going to help me to get that nice and level. Um, and I don't even need to look through my viewfinder. I'm just gonna take, oops. Sorry, the zoom lens accidentally got pushed in. So you don't want the zoom lens to get pushed in. I'm just gonna take that shot. And if you could throw up 2A, please. And you're gonna see, this is where I went ahead. I can't remember if this is the one where I cropped. This is the one where I added a little bit of the background. Um, and um, the reason why I like to add kind of a contrasting background is because that helps the white balance when you're taking a photograph um, so that the camera has some um, context to, to tell wh what white is. You know, there's a lot of colors in there, so it has a really good feel for what white is. So see how nice and crisp and bright and clear that image is with the lighting um, from the shot box. And again, when you're taking overhead shots, there is a, uh, a, there's plenty of opportunity for shadows to be happening. But with the shot box, you have the lighting below where you are photographing from and coming from the sides. And so that, that eliminates shadows. So you have no funky cell phone shadows or camera shadows or arm shadows or whatever in your image. It's just clear and beautiful. Let's move to um, 2B so we can see that, that I cropped this, this time I cropped it completely. So it's only the piece of artwork that's in the image. So this is really something you can do with a photograph, just crop that photograph all the way around. So it just looks like a digital version of that photograph. Um, so there you go. Again, beautiful colors, beautiful clarity, no shadows. Um, and that will, that will be a digitized image that you can keep forever, right? <laughs> and always have that. All right, so let's move on. Um, from archiving, and we're going to do some front-on shots. Yeah, hey, I got a question for you. Sure. Uh, there's a question asking, how do you get a picture without getting any of the box? Okay, so what you'll have to crop. Um, so with, with this camera, I can zoom in um, and not lose um, quality, right? So with this camera, I can just use my zoom lens and zoom in. Um, and until I get, get it right where I want it to. Um, I generally recommend don't zoom all the way when you take your shot, zoom out a little bit so you have some uh, buffer. So you can crop it if you need to, or you know, rotate it just a bit if you've got it off. So I, I usually take a shot a little bit bigger than what I'm gonna end up with so I can um, get the perfect um, image you know, framed in. Um, but like I said, with that camera, I can zoom in <clears throat> because it's, it's so high res, I can zoom in and not lose any quality. When you're using a, a smartphone or a tablet and you try to zoom in, you lose pixels. And so um, that with, with my phone, I take the full photograph with the box in it and everything, and then I edit it and crop it after I take it. So just so that, that's how my phone works. Um, Anyway, um, and again, one thing I wanted to mention about these is I love these because they're, um, they've got a matte, I don't know if you heard this, some of you might not have heard in the beginning, there's like a matte lamination on these. So you can totally wipe them off with a damp cloth, 
if you're working with food, you know, you get anything on there, you can just wipe it off. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, grease resistant, that kind of a thing. Um, so they're high quality. These are going to last for a long time. Um, and um, again, tons of different options. So really, you can really match your brand with all the options that they have. Okay, so let's move on. Let me just take a look at my um, laptop. It will wake up for me so I can see where we're going to next. Okay, all right, jewelry. Let's do one of the infinity backdrops. Now let's talk about these infinity backdrops. So they roll up. Now, if you get yours and you have any wrinkles in yours, um, there's a couple of ways you can deal with that. Um, first, you can lightly spray with a uh, water with a spray bottle on the back and kind of like shake it out and let it hang. And then it usually loosens up fine. And there aren't any wrinkles. Any, any stubborn wrinkles that won't come out, you can iron the back of it on the low setting. So just, just don't iron it on the front, but iron it on the back on a low setting, no steam, um, just to get those um, stubborn wrinkles out. But most of the time, if you just spritz the back, you're golden, you're good to go. Now it has these little um, kind of hooks right here that are gonna hook onto the back. There's, there's you know hooks back there, so it hooks on. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that in there. Um, now, one thing I didn't mention really quickly about glare that I realized I forgot is, um, so not only can you change the strength of the lighting in there, and by the way, these are LED lights um, and they are meant to mimic daylight. That's kind of the idea. And they have up to 50,000 hours in them. So you're, I think this box is gonna outlast the light bulb. I mean, the light bulbs will outlast the box, will outlast whatever you're doing. So we're talking like, decades of, of usage. So um, you don't need to replace them. So that's one thing that I get questions about. All right, so we, we can not only do this, we can use the glare shields. Um, we can also, I'm gonna take the glare shields out now. So hopefully you can see when I do this, there's a toggle switch right here. And right now that's in the center and both lights are on. If you switch to one side, to the other. So you can just have only one set of LED lights on or both. And that gives you an opportunity, like if something's catching glare from one side, you can kind of come from the other side so it doesn't you know, reflect off of whatever. So that's another way to get rid of some glares to do that. All right, so now we've got our infinity backdrop in there and I've got a gorgeous piece of jewelry that I'm gonna place in here. And I want to show you about the side shots. So let's, let me skip that. Make sure that's nice and straight. All right, so here's our side shot. And let's, if we can go to the overhead, please. I'm just gonna show how this attaches on to the, the portable photo studio so you can see. So you're gonna place this part back here into here and it's gonna just kind of hold on there. So let's go back to the front, please. So that's really easy to do. And then there's a power cord and there's a USB port right here. Uh, and you're just going to plug in the USB cord and then again, plug this in in the back where it tells you so I don't even have to look back there. And there are lights, more LED lights on this. So that's going to add some more lighting from the front. Um, and this also has little um, wings that kind of go out. I don't know if you, I just call them wings. So you can place your tablet right here. So there's, there's plenty of room to put a tablet or a phone. Um, this, this is best for tablets and phones and maybe a point and shoot camera that has a timer, but the whole point of this is meant to be hands-free. So you're not holding a device. So that's kind of nice. So, um, I want to show you a couple different ways, um, to photograph this, um, beautiful necklace. So this beautiful necklace, the beads are, are glossy. There's a lot of texture in here, a lot of color. So let me show you a few options. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to turn off or turn down the lighting in the back. And we're just gonna have lighting in the front here from the side shots. So now I, I place my phone upside down when I take pictures here. Um, and then the, we're gonna just tighten that up. You can, you can change, see, let's see, I wanna show you. You can lift this up so it's completely overhead and you can work right here or you can lower it down so that it's eye level so that you're at a little bit of an angle, right? So we're gonna go ahead and go right there. 
And you, as you see, I'm not cropping this image on my phone. I'm gonna crop it later on. And um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this shot so you can see what this looks like. Let's throw up 3A. So you can see, so we only, in this shot, we only have lighting from the front, right? Um, and so you can kind of see what this reminds me of is when you take a photo with a flash. So you get a lot of, uh, of light in the front. There's harsh shadows behind it. Um, that, you know, there's a lot of glare, not a lot, but there's some glare on that image. Um, and you know, it's not terrible, but it's probably, it's not the best. Like we can do better. So let me show you how to do better with the shot box. So we're gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna turn on the um, lights all the way from the dial. Those are the lights inside the box and I'm going to unplug my side shot. So I can use it with or without the lights. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a shot now and let's throw up 3B. So you can see what it looks like if you're just using lighting inside the box with no glare shields and no lighting coming from the front, okay? So we've got a nice soft background. There aren't harsh shadows behind the jewelry there. Um, the color is nice and realistic. It's very natural. Um, there is a little bit of loss of texture in there because there isn't any lighting coming from the front. There aren't any, um, it's less 3D, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So you, there's a, a lot less shadows in between the beads. So there's a little bit of loss of texture there, but it's a nice photograph. It's really not that bad. That would sell, you know, if you've got that up on Etsy or wherever you're selling, that's gonna sell. Um, so let's do with both now. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this side shot back in. Um, all right, and I've got everything full strength, um, no glare shields, and I'm gonna take the photo. Whoops, there we go. Okay, let's look at 3C and see when we've got lighting from the top and from the front, look at that. So now you can see all this new texture. So the beads are more defined. There's a little bit of, of gloss. You can see the gloss. So you get a better, more, more real, um, idea of what this item looks like, what it what it's going to feel like, you know, how it's going to feel. So that is my personal favorite image out of all three. Um, you might prefer, um, you know, a, a different one, but that to me looks like some gorgeous photography. So now let me just mention um, here that you are going to need to do some post shoot editing. Every single photographer Annie Leibovitz, you know, whoever it is, you have to do post shoot editing. That's just part of photography. So you, you need to learn a little bit about that, right? And, and there's a lot of free stuff out there online. So my favorite app to use is Lightroom. I also like to use Photoshop, um, but um, I recommend doing some research, you know, watching some YouTube videos, you know, whatever you need to do to figure out how to edit your photos post op. Now you can go overboard, and over edit your photo so it doesn't look realistic anymore. So you wanna still have that natural look, but just kind of give that photo a little extra pop. Um, there are uh, apps that you can use with, um, with um, uh, automatic settings, you know, an automatic, if you're in Photoshop, it's gonna be like a, gosh, I can't even think of the word right now, presets, there we go. That's the word, presets in Lightroom that automatically add certain, you know, do certain settings for you and you can scale it down or up from there. So that's what I recommend is Lightroom with some, some presets that you like that kind of give your uh, images that feel of your brand that you're going for. So um, questions? Yes. Okay. There's a question wondering, if, will there be any additional colors of the infinity backgrounds? I believe we do have some more backgrounds in the works. So coming soon. There's another sneak peek for you for joining me today. <laughs> All right, but you didn't hear here. Um, okay, any <laughs> other questions? Question. Yeah. Um, there was a question if you could speak to the actual mats, the color mats or the solid mats compared to say, um, maybe some type of a cardstock or okay. any other type of mat. Good question. So I have used um, some cardstock in here. You, cardstock is smaller. Cardstock is, I, I mean, I guess you can buy larger cardstock or poster board so you can cut it down to size. Um, the, the inside dimensions are um, 14, oh gosh, 14 and three quarters by 14. And, no, let's see, there's 15. It's between 14 and 15 inches. They're it's a little different width versus 
um, you know, depth versus height or whatever, but it's in between 14 to 15 inches. Um, there is a an, uh, Shopbox FAQ page on the Shopbox website. So there is a Shopbox dedicated website and there's some FAQs there that have the exact dimensions, um, but it's between 14 and 15 inches. So you just, you know, you can make backgrounds to, to fit in that space. Um, in different colors or you know whatever you do the the scrapbooking cardstock is 12 by 12 so that's going to limit you know how much uh, you know it's probably you know it takes off a couple inches from these that you can buy to go with it but you can use those i i have photographed with poster board underneath with cardstock underneath with fabric underneath you know it just depends on what what look you're looking for the green backdrop yes that's for green screen or if you want a green backdrop but it, you can use it as a green screen and then after you photograph you would add in a digital background. I'm sorry, I can't give you any tips on that because I don't do that. We have people at work that do that kind of cool stuff. So, yes. And Monica has one more question. Do you ever change your settings to your camera? Your I do. Camera? Yes, I do. So it's important. I highly recommend whatever smartphone you have to, to do a deep dive into um, your camera settings and what, what capabilities it has, um, what kinds of things you can do post, you know, pre-shoot to kind of help with, with better images. Now, one thing I should mention right here is certain um, devices do not have the capability to handle uh, certain levels of lighting on this. So you'll notice once in a while, and it's usually the older devices, that you'll see some banding, like especially as you turn down the lighting, let's see, am I turning that up or down? I'm turning it down. As you turn it down, especially you'll start to see some banding. So if that happens, um, you can do two things, turn it back up, right? To the a higher strength where there's no banding, or you can take a look at your camera settings because you might be able to tweak something in there so that it can handle the, the, the light waves that it's receiving or whatever. I don't know the exact science of it, but um, the banding does happen when certain cameras can't handle that, the level of lighting in there. Like, so just so you know, that's something to be aware of. So if you see like kind of shadow and light stripes across your image, that means you need to either turn the, the strength of the lighting back up or try to find a setting in your camera that you need to adjust to, to disappear the banding. Okay, um, and other questions right now? Um, I have two, two other questions. One question is how do you prevent the shining off of jewelry? And then another one, how well would it do if you wanna take black and white photos? If you want to take white photos. Okay, good question. So the jewelry, I mean, it's really personal preference. Honestly, I, if, if my, if I want to emphasize that that item is glossy, that it's beautifully laminated or, you know, whatever, beautifully polished, um, I'm going to let a little bit of that glare, that gloss show, right? But if I don't want that to show, I mean, you, you want to make sure that you're advertising, um, ethically, <laughs> honestly, right? So, um, you don't want to deceive your customers and they won't trust you, right? So that that um, this doesn't have any glare if it really does, or it doesn't have any gloss if it really does, right? Um, so I don't know if, um, if we could go back to um, 3B and I'll show you the photo that doesn't have the, um, sorry, that's my dog. I think she wants out. You want out, Daisy? Go on. Sorry about that. We've got this teeny little Yorkie. Okay, so um, if we look at this, so, there's less shine on those beads. Is that, is that B? Yeah. There's less shine on those beads than the other photographs because the front lighting is not on. So I, that's when I unplug the side shot. Um, so you're getting more of the lighting from above. Um, so that's one way to do it. Um, but honestly, with these beads, I would want, if I were a customer, I would want to see a little bit of shine because they're gorgeously polished beads, right? Um, so the white, now photographing in white, um, you're, you're gonna want to be careful there because you can, your images can look blown out. They can look um, overwhelming, you know, flat with a lot of white, um, but white does also look crisp and beautiful, you know, and clean. Um, so just make sure if you're photographing with white backgrounds that your whatever item you're photographing has plenty of color in it. So your camera can read that color and get an accurate reading of the, the white balance. We talk about white balance, um, you know, in photography where um, you're getting like a, a natural uh, display of colors, right? So you just wanna make sure that, that your, your item has some color so that camera can read the color so it 
it doesn't wash out that white. Now, if you don't have enough color in there and your camera doesn't have the right settings to adjust your white balance, you can get an image that looks bluish or yellowish, you know, depending on your camera or whatever. So you just wanna make sure you have a nice true white. Um, and that's best usually done with, with making sure there's a color colors in there that your camera can read. So it gets the, the color balance, the white balance correct. Okay, other questions? We're good to move on. Um, you can go ahead and move on. I'll, I'll ask okay. you uh, in a moment. Okay, we'll do, we'll do more questions in a bit. All right, so right now we're gonna do some food crafting. So I'm gonna take my side shot off. Unplug that. We're going to switch to some different backgrounds here. Now, I'm going to show you my two favorite for food crafting, speaking of white. Um, these aren't the only ones. There's a lot of options for food crafting because there's lots of um, wood grain in the photo reel. There are three or four different kinds and colors and styles of wood grain. So um, those work well, like they look like maybe a wood, you know, wooden kitchen counter. Um, or a table. Um, and then also these, these two are my favorite. There's a marble and then there's this subway tile. I love that. Just make sure when you use this that you've got it going the right direction that the shadows are at the bottom, not at the top. That's, so that's realistic. So be aware of that. So that's going to go in the back. That's my backsplash in my kitchen, right? That just kind of props up in there. And then the marble countertop is going to go down here. <clears throat> and I'm going to turn <clears throat> excuse me, on the lights. I'm going to go full strength. <clears throat> now you can see here, this is a good opportunity to use your glare shields because you guys can't see anything in there, right? Um, when you're photographing, you can manage that when you're photographing, but you can also pop up your glare shields to kind of cut down on the glare coming out of there with the white. Okay, so see how much better that looks? <laughs> so you can see. Um, what size bust is the necklace on? Oh goodness. You know, I don't know. I wanna say that's probably like eight or 10 inches, eight or 10 inches tall. It's a pretty big necklace. It's a good size, chunky necklace. And I picked that because I wanted, I wanted you to see the colors and see the, you know, the texture and everything. Okay, so foods. All right, we've got some cupcakes here that we're gonna throw in to my kitchen. Okay, now for this, I'm gonna use the phone. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take three different shots at different angles. Um, because I wanna show you the difference that your angle as you photograph makes, whether it's you know eye level, whether you're coming at it from below, whether you're, coming at it from above or, you know, kind of a higher angle. So I'm going to take three shots here. I'm going to come in and take three shots here. One higher, one medium, and one kind of at eye level. All right, so let's pop up for A. Um, so you can see the first one that's kind of higher up. So um, you can kind of see now there's going to be shadows. So let's talk about shadows for a second, because if your photograph has no shadows, that is not going to look real. It's going to look photoshopped. In other words, it's going to look fake um, because objects have shadows. They have that's the, that's what makes our eyes see dimension, right? If there's no shadows, we don't see dimension. So, you know, there's going to be a little bit of shadows. The idea, though, with shadows is that they're not harsh. They're soft. Um, that they don't distract from the image, right? So um, this is a, kind of above, up higher. And so at this point, you're really, your eye is going to focus more on the top decoration, on the sprinkles are kind of popping out at you, right? So you're kind of getting that kind of an image. Let's go to the next one, to 4B. And this is kind of a mid angle. So it's not super high, not, not eye level quite yet. Um, and you're going to see the difference that this makes um, when you know what, like each, each angle kind of emphasizes something differently. So we're sort of seeing the um, cupcake wraps more, right? That's kind of more prominent in the photograph. The sprinkles are, are still pretty prominent in the photograph. Um, it's a little less about the cute little toppings on the top, right? So you need to think about in your image, what are you trying to emphasize? What do you want the eye to go to first? 
um, in your shot. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is a little bit less, sorry, like I said, about the top and more about what's happening lower down on the cupcake. Um, let's go to the next one to 4C and you'll see an eye level shot. And this is gonna, again, change what your eye is drawn to. Um, if I'm advertising those cupcake wrappers, maybe I want my eye level shot so I can really see those cupcake wrappers. Um, if I'm advertising those sprinkles, the angle should you know, kind of emphasize the sprinkles more. If I'm advertising the tops of the cupcakes, then I wanna go at a really high angle so you can see those tops nicely. So it, that's, um, if we can go to C. <clears throat> Oh, that's A, B, and then, oh, did we skip C, 4C? There we go. Okay, so that's kind of eye level. So you can just see, you know, that the, the, think about your angle when you're photographing. That's really what I wanted to point out here is to think about your angle um, when, when you're taking pictures and what you want to emphasize. So, um, Fun with the food crafts. You can do flat lays with food crafts too, just like we did in the beginning and, you know, get a nice countertop shot. Um, so that's, those are options. Um, any questions before we move on? We've just got about 10 more minutes left. I think one of them you may have answered, just wondering when and when not to use the magnetic strips. Yeah, so you, you'll get a feel like when you pop them in there, you'll immediately see the effect that those are going to have on your photos. Um, it's going to lower the strength of the lights. It's going to redirect them a little bit. Um, one of the nice things about the reason why this the, the sides of the box are kind of um, bent inward is because that helps to sort of disperse the light throughout the box. It kind of reflects it in all directions, right? So that's one of the benefits. When you put those glare shields up, that's gonna redirect the lighting. So um, just put them in and play with it. If you're, this, these are mainly for when you're dealing with glare, like on your item that you're photographing. Um, that's what I recommend. Also like for, for this case, the benefit was you could actually see what was going on inside the box. I would not photograph what I did right there with my glare shields um, because there's too much shadow for what I was photographing. Um, but I wanted you guys to have the benefit of seeing what was going on inside the box there a little better. So, um, but just keep in mind, these are mostly for when you have like some glare on the item that you're photographing to kind of help to cut that out just to redirect the lights a little bit. So good question. There's one more question. If you had any tips um, on using um, photographing fabric objects. Fabric objects. Um, like, I guess, I guess it depends on what it is. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think, like maybe a, a headband or, you know, something that you, I'm trying to think of, um, like a purse or a, you know, coin purse or something, you know, a small object that you've made out of fabric. If you can, I, I like to do those flat lay if I can. Um, because you get, you sort of get a better feel for the texture. So, natural light so when you're photographing you're really kind of going for a natural lighting look right um without the harsh shadows so natural light comes from above right when you go outside it's coming from above unless it's like super sunsetty and you're getting you know but most lighting kind of comes from above that's the natural lighting so that's what i like to do is i like to do the flat lays with fabric if i can if i can't if it's you know if it's something that needs to be upright um, then do it that way. But I, um, and it depends on the color and, you know, it depends on what you're trying to advertise, but um, I get it. I feel like I get a bit better feel for the texture of the fabric when I do a flat lay. So I don't know if that helps. Um, okay. There's one more question that I did see. Um, if you could, once you get an opportunity to be able to review what exactly came with the shot box. Ah, yes. Okay. So in the shot box box, you get the portable photo studio, the built-in lighting, obviously um, you get the power cord, you're getting the two glare shields, you're getting two infinity backdrops, the white and the black. Um, and then you get the storage bag, which, excuse me, is right here. So it's, it's um, a good storage bag that will hold up your, your portable photo studio and all your accessories and your power cords and everything. Um, so that's what comes in the box. All right, so we're going to now do a video. So I'm going to use my side shot because this will allow my hands to be free because I want to have my hands in this particular video. So I'm going to attach that back and I'm going to put this right straight so it's 
completely flat and level. And then I'm gonna use this pretty pink backdrop that's part of the solid um, set that you can buy separately. And I'm gonna put a couple pieces of masking tape. You're gonna to wanna to use low tack tape. Um, so like washi tape is good, um, painter's tape would work, masking tape works, but just to hold that down so that it doesn't shift while I'm working with it. Um, and this way I can use my hands in the shot um, and um, my hands are gonna be free. So now I'm gonna plug the side shot back in so we get lighting from above on the side shot. And then I'm gonna actually leave the lights on inside. I need to turn them down just a tad. So it's not super strong coming from this direction, but it's pretty even. Okay, so here I've got a cute Mother's Day card. Um, so let's just for a second talk about Instagram. Instagram has added a lot of fun features um, to you know, get more views, more eyes on your items that you're selling. One of those is Reels. I don't know if you're familiar with those or if you've seen those, but they're 15 to 30 second videos and it's not meant to be a full tutorial. It's not meant to be like, you know, totally informative and like educational. It's just meant to <clears throat> build awareness for whatever you're trying to sell. Sorry, I need a quick drink of water. Um, they are really popular right now. Whatever the new feature is that your social media platforms are introducing, I recommend jumping on that because that will boost your algorithm. You'll get more views, more eyes on your products. So I just wanted to show you an easy way to make a quick reel for Instagram um, and that you have the option to add that to your Instagram feed. So it will sit on your feed and be permanent there. Um, and so <clears throat> that's kind of fun. I like to do a lot of those and we've been having a lot of success with We Are Memory Keepers um, with using reels. So I'm gonna just show you how to do a quick reel and then I'll show you what that looks like. Um, I do recommend when you're doing a video to get a still shot um, of whatever you're doing. And it needs to be a vertical shot. That's gonna be, um, I think the ratios are nine by 16 is, is the ratio. And for Instagram, it's gonna be um, 1920 pixels tall by 1080 pixels across. So that's basically your you know smartphone uh, dimension. So um, get, get a vertical shot still shot of your image, um, a really good shot that tells the story that draws the eye in because you're going to need that for um, when you add it to your feed. Otherwise, Instagram will automatically pick some random moment during your video and put that up as your um, as your thumbnail on your feed. And you may not like that image. That image will not attract eyes to that view. Nobody's going to click on that if it's a blurry shot of you, your hand moving out of the screen or whatever. So take a really solid, good, eye-catching vertical shot of your image. So you can use that as your cover or your thumbnail for your video. Okay. So um, I already did that ahead of time, but let me just shoot this reel and kind of show you what some of my go-to things are. Now, when I am shooting video on my smartphone, I do zoom in um, because my particular um, photo uh, video editing app that I use, I can't zoom in. So some of you might have uh, like that capability and I would do it that way if you can. But if you can't crop your videos in your um, video editing software app, then zoom in for sure. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. So I just get my pink background. All right, and make sure my phone is straight and centered. Okay, so, and again, it's upside down because the holes down here. All right, so now here's a quick tip. When you're using hands in a video and you're putting something together or you're making something, um, each step that you do, take your hands out of the shot, do the step, hands out of the shot, do the next step, hands out of the shot. That to the eye, for some reason, I don't know why, but to the eye that looks more clear, it looks easier to read. Your eye says, okay, here's the next step. If you watch videos where the hands are in the shot the whole time and you can kind of, it, it's a little more convoluted. I don't know why. I think it's just because your brain resets when the hands leave. You know how like when you walk into another room and your brain resets and forgets whatever you were looking for. 
<laughs> when you walk in that room, same kind of thing. Your brain resets when those hands go back in. So it automatically says, this is another step. Here we go. So just a tip that you'll notice it looks a lot better when your hands go out and come back in for each step. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna, um, I like to start with my item really up close and then bring it down. That's just a kind of a fun thing to, to get the interest. So we're gonna start there, come down. Then I like to give it a little wiggle and then I put it down and then my hands are out of the shot. See, they're both out of the shot and then I'm gonna start putting this together. We're gonna start right here. Hands out of the shot, grab the next sticker. We're gonna stick that in right there. Both hands out of the shot. We're moving to the next sticker. We're gonna put that right there. This is a cute little Mother's Day card out of the shot. Here comes another piece. It's gonna go right there. Both hands out of the shot. Little butterfly accent right there, hands out. And then we've got this T and I'm gonna shake the T before I put it down because I want them to notice that. And then I'm gonna bring my hands back in, put a little sticker. And then I'm gonna slide this in and then I'm gonna show, look, you can pull that in and out. And then I'm gonna give it a little twirl around because there's gold foil and I want them to see the shimmer on the gold foil. And then I'm gonna do a little shake and then I'm gonna bring it back up and focus on that same flower that I started on. Okay, so <laughs> that was probably very confusing for you watching the back of me and not being able to see what I'm doing, but watch this reel. And the fun thing with reels is this is gonna be um, 5A or 5, 5A is the, yeah, okay, so watch. A little choppy, but you can see, oh, I forgot to do this. I showed them that it was a pocket. So that's the step that I missed. Okay, then see how my hands go out of the shot. So you see, okay, here's the next step, right? Okay, next step. See the difference that makes? I can't even tell you that makes a big difference. Kind of funny, but it does. And then you add your sticker, pop it in. It comes in and out. There's the gold foil and we're done. Okay, and the fun thing with reels is you can add music, really fun music. Um, depending on what type of account you have and how many followers you have, your choices will be different at this point. Um, you can also add your own music in your you know, software app before you post it if you want. You don't have to use their music, but there's a lot of fun options. And if you use the trending music, because you know when you go to add music, it'll show you what's trending right now you will get more views. Okay, so there's just a little tip. So um, any questions? I think that's pretty much all I have to share. Any questions before we finish? No, everyone appears to have enjoyed everything. Hoping that maybe a part two <laughs> with, more to, <laughs> with more advanced uh, tips and tricks could yeah, come in the future. Sure, I'm totally up for that. I, I could talk about this all day. <laughs> this is one of my passions, so. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining me, you guys. I hope you have an awesome weekend. Grab your shot box. I promise you will not regret it. Um, also on our um, YouTube channel and on our blog, we have a lot of tips. We have a lot of different ideas. Um, so you can find some resources there as well. Um, so thanks so much for joining me, you guys. Happy making, happy crafting, and have a great weekend. Take care.